I just want to say a few more things. These issues that we talk about are not abstractions to me. They are as real as the thousands of places that I have gone in this state that I still go on a weekly basis. They are as immediate and real as the people who have taken me into their homes on now a hundred plus evenings, the people I have met in towns large and small. I'm constantly reuniting now after five years of road work with people that I've seen before. We do our best to keep track, but sometimes I just stumble over them. And every time I do, it just makes me more determined that we will not simply pre preserve, but extend this record of excellence that we're building in our state. Last week, I saw Tracy Deaton at the Farmer's Corner Market in Boswell. The first time I met her, we'd had breakfast. I was walking out to the RV and a car was pulling out onto the highway when she came flying out the door, a waitress in that restaurant. She has, I believe, five kids and clearly struggles to make ends meet. She ran, caught them just at the last minute, and I heard her say, Sir, I found this $20 bill under your table. I think it must belong to you. For people like Tracy Deaton, and we've got millions of them, we are not going to let people reverse our progress. In Iraq, the week before, I ran across my friend Eddie Proctor. His brother Joe was the first in Hoosier to win the Silver Star since the Vietnam conflict. If you haven't, you ought to go to the Guard website and read the citation. While delivering gasoline in a town in Iraq, Joe Proctor saw a truck crash through a fence and head for a barracks where there were a couple hundred people. He stood in the open, fired his rifle until he had killed the suicide bomber whose bomb then blew up in the open, killing him but saving hundreds. We are not going to let Eddie Proctor down. He's in Iraq right now serving us. The party of hope, the party of change, cannot fail this state, cannot fail the good people who live in it. We are here not merely for fun, not merely for the thrill that comes with winning. We are here for the people in all those places that our opponents have never been and will never see. The folks for whom $4 gas means they do without something else. The folks for whom a, an unaffordable prescription drug bill meant they sometimes had to substitute for food or other necessities. The folks without whom our new health insurance HIP plan means that they live every day in the fear of financial ruin if something goes wrong medically. The folks for whom if we don't find a way, and we will, to guarantee the young people of this state two years of education at least after high school, they won't go to college, they won't get the job, they won't have the life they are capable of. Those things will not be, we must not allow those things to happen when it's in our power to do that. So just as it happens, I met another old friend last week, not so old actually. I ran into Mitch Perkins. He's 10 years old. He lives in the little town or just outside the town of Stroh, up in the northeast corner. And uh, Mitch is a celebrity because when I first met him, he was five. And he happened to wind up in one of our reality shows. And he slowly, slowly printed his name in the middle of the back bumper of the RV. And for months after, I'd find people back there rooting around looking for it. They wanted to see where that little boy, Mitch, wrote his name. As kids do, he's now a different person. He's 10, and before he knows it or his folks know it, he'll be ready to go out in this world. 
So I want to close by saying to all the young people who are here, and it's so important that there's so many of you, this has always been about you. If you're five, we want you, you want your parents to know that you can go to kindergarten all day if that's their choice. If you're in your school years, we want to make certain that you spend every day in an orderly classroom with an excellent teacher. If you're finishing high school, we want to guarantee you that if your family can't afford it, you can go on to Ivy Tech or any in any other direction that allows you to further and extend your education because you're going to need it for the world you're growing up in. And, and when you're ready for full-time work, we're going to break our backs to make sure there's an abundance of meaningful, diverse, family-supporting jobs waiting there for you if you're man or woman enough to fill them and do a good job of it. Yesterday, I spent the middle of the day with several hundred young people, many of whom are right here in front right now. I said to them then, your turn is coming sooner than you think. Pretty soon this will, whether Indiana is a state of excellence or a state of mediocrity will be your assignment. But we are just determined to turn over to these young people every opportunity to make it a great state to make it the, just the best state for them to pursue their dreams and raise their families the way it's been for so many of us who thank the Lord every night that he gave us a place like Indiana. Now I'm just going to take a second to look at you all this way because this is the last time I'll get to do it. One way or another, this is the last campaign I'll be involved in. There is no other office I've ever been interested in or ever will be. I have no ambition except the one we started with, to take this state, shake it by the lapels, help it realize its fantastic potential, stop its decline, and begin its ascent. So let's go win this fall. Let's go win big. Let's go win big and let's do it the right way, just like the last time. Let's be positive. No disparagement of anybody's character or motives. Let's talk always about the future. Let's aim high and dream big. Let's offer our fellow citizens new ideas about tomorrow, not just complaints about today. New ideas based on the changing issues and challenges we face, but rooted in the eternal principles that we've always stood for as a party. Let's speak to the best instincts of our fellow citizens. Let's be inclusive. Let's offer them a program and a ticket which reaches to every corner and says we want this blossoming growth, this new excellence in Indiana to take in everybody and everywhere. There, I said starting years ago there is room on that RV of ours for anybody of any party, of any viewpoint who believes in Indiana enough to want to change it and who's committed to doing the things necessary to do that. There's room in this movement too. You are its core, but we must reach out to every citizen of any party or no party who believes with us and wants this state to really be great. This is what you're a part of. This is what you have started. This is what we must now finish. That freight train of change has been rolling now for three and a half years. It wasn't a figure of speech. It wasn't an empty promise. But most of the cars on that train have yet to arrive, have yet to come through. And I, we have such an opportunity to make all that happen, just as, just as these achievements of the last three and a half years, they prove we can do it. So let's roll on, Republicans. Let's roll on to a big win in November and then to what matters most, four more years of hard work to lead to these young people and all our children the state of hope 
they so richly deserve. God bless our cause and each of you.